Hey there, the Network Berg here. Today I'll be talking about Mikrotik Router S version 7 and particularly why I don't use it in a production network, in an ISP network. And there's going to be a bit to talk about. This was regarding a poll that I posted a month or so ago on my channel and a few people wanted to know why I don't use version 7. So I figured, hey, let me just make a video about it. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. So let's talk about why I don't use Router S version 7 in my production networks. So usually I'd skip to my presentation or my tutorial bit here and we'll, we'll showcase that stuff as well. But now we're just going to actually see eye to eye and actually talk a little bit about the things that I dislike about router is version 7 and i want to make it clear it's almost like a disclaimer i love microtech and i love router OS version 7 it's definitely a step up and it is going the right direction and it's totally fine to use this microtech version on any just normal router for any standard things that you're using especially if it's a fresh setup then i can definitely recommend using router OS version 7 i think it's perfect for those new type of setups but my issue comes in with existing configuration, perhaps you've got a router, it's got a ton of bit of extra configuration that you've added over the years. Or if you're an ISP and you are running multiple different customers across your ISP network and you're dealing with stuff like MPLS and BGP and OSPF and route reflectors and all kinds of crazy stuff, then I unfortunately I can't recommend router S version 7 for that because there is still some bugs and glitches. And that is the main reason I'm not using router S version 7 for my production environment, because there's stuff like BGP VRF spanning that doesn't work correctly. They they released a new version, I think a couple of weeks ago, that kind of fix um, VRF spanning between two BGP neighbors, but it doesn't fix the issue with route reflectors. Route reflectors still doesn't work properly. So you can't really use this for your bigger type of networks. And for me, and I feel for many WISPs and other maybe fiber to the home, maybe even fiber to the business providers, whenever they're using Microtix, it's not um, because they're too poor to buy something like Cisco or Juniper or whatever. It's just because Microtix is such a good fit for that niche and it works well. And yes, it is inexpensive, but it, it just works. But if I'm going to version seven, and suddenly features that I used in version six doesn't work anymore, then, you know, it's, it's difficult to recommend using that version for an ISP network because you're going to have a ton of issues, especially if you're on my situation where you might have hundreds of different routers and there's a lot of configuration on that routers and maybe there's some bug that haven't, hasn't even been picked up yet. And now you upgrade your Microtech to version seven and all hell breaks loose and you can't afford that you can't have that downtime you can't go and now now you need to reload from a backup and you need to net install back to version 6 it's it's really a a tedious and almost uh, an un un unfortunate um, issue and that, that's something that I feel is a bit weird with Microsoft as well because I see a lot of users on forums and reddit and whatnot recommending if you want to go from version 6 to version 7 that you need to net install to version 7 and that I feel is completely incorrect but because no other vendor makes you do that no vendor wants you to factory reset your device and then upgrade to the latest version and then reset up all your stuff from scratch it's it's really unheard of so the fact that I see users recommending that to each other, I haven't seen that from Microtech. I've just seen users saying it, but that's kind of just the general consensus. And it, it almost brings me to a like a joke that I see a lot in the community and between ISPs about when it comes to Microtech and their software releases, because right now we're all just kind of waiting for the long-term release to come out. And the joke that people keep telling each other is, hey, if you're working with Microtech, if you're using the long-term release, that's actually the stable version. Because the version that's labeled stable, that's actually the test version. <laughs> because there's still known bugs running in that stable version. And it's unfortunate because if you go onto Microtech's homepage and you look, you can see there is no long-term version yet for version 7. That means even Microtech knows that not all of the bugs have been ironed out. I mean, I'll see if I can maybe post... Um, 
logs of the change logs uh, while I'm talking. So you can see all of the different stuff that Marketic has had to change and fix since releasing version 7 in December of 2021. And we're now months down the line. We're almost hitting in April. So let's say it's been a good three or four months that Marketic has um, released version 7 officially. And you know, it, it, it still feels like a lot of the features are still being beta tested. It also seems like there are missing features. People are asking for stuff like BFD. When is that coming back? When is that going to be working? What about point to point addressing? Um, you know, and I'm not the one that can answer that for the people. It's it's something that only marketing can really answer. But it's it's crazy to me. And uh, somebody that was in the poll i'll see if i can link their comment as well um while editing the video but let me switch my view now to the actual view that i usually have because we're going to go into marketing's website because i've had this issue happen to me as an isp where a customer managing their own marketing as well phoned me and said hey my stuff stopped working and then i had to troubleshoot with them and then when i logged on to their marketing and i saw they upgraded to version 7 you know all I could tell them is, why did you upgrade to version 7? And they told me the reason they upgraded to version 7 is because their alternative ISP, the, the people that they also get internet from, told them to upgrade their router to the latest version. And that is a very normal thing to do because, you know, we're people. It, it, you want the best and latest software because in our minds, that means that's the thing that works the best. Now, in this situation, this person went and they clicked on the software tab, and they did what that ISP told them, and they downloaded the latest version of their Microtech. Now, this is also a, a bit of a griping issue for me, is I come here to look at what the software is that I can download, and what's the first thing you see? You see Router OS version 7. Version 6, it's below version 7, so you, you, you don't automatically and instantly see that, you just see version 7. And now from here, and as I mentioned, there is no long-term release. There you see there's a just a placeholder. There's nothing to download yet, because... Microtech knows this isn't 100% uh, on par yet. But you can get the stable version or a test version of 7.2 Release Candidate 5, uh, which they've also made a lot of changes and it seems to be going in the right direction there. But with 7.1.5, um, this is what you could download. And this person that I had on the other line, they, they just came here, they downloaded this for their Microtech and now suddenly the routing table was missing, the L2TP tunnel wasn't establishing anymore weird stuff was happening and you know this this i feel like could have been prevented if there was maybe either put version 6 above version 7 because we know that is the actual long-term or stable version still that people can use and put a disclaimer here tell people here from the get-go version 7 is still not completely production ready there's still stuff that's being worked on um, even as recently as version 7.1.4 I, I actually went from version 7.1.3, I had that running on my EVE topology, you know, the videos that I usually make to showcase and do tutorials and stuff. I had a nice BGP lab there with OSPF. Let me see if I can actually log in and show you guys. Um, yeah, here's the lab anyways. And what I had doing here was I've been testing stuff like the BGP with the VRF being spanned using a route reflector. And in version 7.1.3, all of the configuration worked fine. I actually upgraded the routers directly from version 6 to version 7.1.3 and I booted it up. All of the OSPF stuff worked. Um, the BGP was a little bit finicky. I had to make a little bit of changes, but the BGP worked fine after I, I made a few tweaks. Uh, one thing that I did see that was weird upgrading from 7.1.3 to 7.1.4 um, or actually just going to 7.1.3, excuse me. Um, my VRF interfaces was a bit weird as well. So the Marketic added interfaces that didn't exist, like the VRF name was Customer1. And it added an interface called Customer1, although it should have added Ethernet2, um, for example. And it didn't do that. I, I don't know why I removed that weird dummy interface, added Ethernet2. Oh, that was actually what fixed this uh, BGP configuration. Now I recall. But the BGP was fixed and everything was working. Then I went from 713 to 714. And then all my BGP broke. So, you know, how, how can I justify that? If I just go from one version that's working totally fine to another version that just suddenly breaks my BGP, if I'm an ISP, if that was my provider edge router and I, I had 
hundreds of customers uh, terminating on that and the, I upgraded the router, BGP broke, I would be in some serious trouble because now I've got hundreds of customers that can't have connectivity because we did a, a software upgrade on our vendor's latest stable package and it's just not going to cut it. It's just not going to, to make it because <laughs> that's not how it's supposed to work. So I think that is one of the key reasons why I've stuck to version six, because I know that it's stable. The ground is solid on version six. I know what works. I know how to change things. If something breaks, version seven is still pretty much an open playing field. Like everything is still being figured out. There's still bugs being reported each and every other day where people saying this isn't working. I've seen people complain about RB 5009s just losing power or memory or, or the, they just power cycle randomly. And it's, it's sad as well because all of the latest hardware runs version 7 by default. There's Guys, I just want to stress that you're not going to get away from version 7. Version 7, you need to adapt and you need to adopt it as well. But if you're using any of the new hardware, you are going to be stuck on version 7. And like I said in the beginning of the video, version 7 is totally fine if it's a new setup and you're just adding things as it comes and then you'll see maybe something doesn't work when you've added that new bit of config then you know exactly what you can report to MyCritic and they can help you fix the issue then it's perfect but for networks that have a lot of configuration existing config migrating to version 7 that's a completely different story so you know I think actually this is just the point I wanted to make and and share that story or some of the stories and just show some of the stuff um, with version 7 and I'd also like to hear you guys' thoughts what's your experiences been with Routeways version 7 have you had issues has it been smooth sailing for you am I being silly when it comes to version 7 um, you know should I be making more content regarding version 7 because I know a lot of people want version 7 content and I've been kind of keeping off of it because of the bugs but since I said the new hardware forces you to go to version 7. I'm actually considering just also updating a lot of the videos just for version 7 as well. Just to showcase. The, the, the thing that bugs me or worries me is that I'm going to showcase you something on version 7. And then in a new patch, it changes how you need to do that again. So, you know, that's, that, that's more of a me issue when I'm creating these videos. But, um, yeah... It, it doesn't feel nice having to redo all of those stuff and it's also not something I'm looking forward to but I am looking forward to a long-term release of version 7 that actually works with all of the bugs ironed out um, and we should also learn to not hype up a product so much because I know for a fact when version 7 was still in beta before it was even released into beta people were always talking to each other and saying don't worry version 7 will fix x problem version 7 is going to resolve y problem because we all just thought hey version 7 is going to be this new amazing it's going to be so boundless you you, you can do anything with version 7 and there's definitely a lot of new things on version 7. I love the affinity control for the BGP with the dual CPU um, core usage. I love the zero tier stuff. I love all of the additional benefits that we get by being on the new kernel. But, you know, it, it's not like <laughs> it's not like how we, but that's our fault. We told each other how awesome version 7 is going to be. And at the end of the day, it's, it's just a leg up from version 6, but it will it was missing some of the key features that made version 6 great and hopefully going forward Microtech can bring all of those key features back into version 7 and everything can run the way it should run and we shouldn't have to worry about upgrading or updating our software to the latest version because it shouldn't break our configurations or our connectivity if we do anyways i'm going to sign off the video here i've been talking for quite a while um, again i'd like to hear your points and i'll see you in the next video bye